Alright, Shalom Israel, back again, part 5. Me, Sonic, and the Cult Symbols Illustrated. We were tearing up uh, the penis, the missing penis of Osiris. Um, Alright, I'm still pulling from this book. I'm going to stop going back to the back, to the references. Um, this, it's already decked out. We know it's referenced, already complete. If you want to check it out, you can go check it out yourselves. I'm going to try to save some time because I got too much stuff to bring out. It's all referenced, it's all there. It says... The two pillars, says fellows, represented two imaginary columns supposed to be placed at the econesis um, to support the heavens. The one on the left called Boaz and indicates Osiris. So see, they're taking the pillars that we had in uh, Solomon's temple and they're perverting it. They always take our stuff and they perverted it. So they're saying one pillar indicates Osiris or the sun and the one on the right is called Yakim and designated Isis, the symbol of both the earth and its productions and of the moon. So see, they always pervert our stuff. But what else does it say? Another name for the four-sided pillars of the, is the obelisk. Pillars have always been worshipped as gods. In Egypt, the obelisk stood for the sun god. The New Age magazine, so there's your sun god worship again. The New Age magazine had an article by 33rd degree mason Henry Ridley Evans in which he said that Osiris, the god of the underworld, was also depicted in the form of a pillar. So see, Osiris is depicted as a pillar, and a broken pillar is because his penis got broken off. So it says, in fact, in numbers, their occult power and mystic virtues, we find that the lingam, the male sex organ, was an upright pillar. So see, H.L. Haywood, another mason, states... Quote, in some cases, these crude rock pillars were thought to be the abodes of gods or demons, in others, homes of the ghosts, and often as symbols of sex. Of the last named usage, one writer had said that pillars of stone, when associated with worship, had been from time immemorial regarded as symbols of the active and passive, the generative and the uh, fecundating principles. In Egypt, Horus and Set, um, were regarded as two living pillars, twin builders and supporters of the heavens. Yeah, supporters of the gay heaven. That's what that is. Look at that. Pillars of stone. See, this is why the Most High told us not to be worshipping wood and stone, people. This is why we're not supposed to be making idols like they have over there in Mecca, walking around counterclockwise like a bunch of psychos, kissing this vagina stone, man. Because that's what that is. This is why we are not supposed to have wood and stone. Because of this. Doing what these people do, man. Come on. Come on, Shaka. You rebellious Hebrews need to get it together, man. <clears throat> Here we go. Masonic Arthur Rollin Blackmer elaborates, quote, The symbolism regarding solar worship indicating by the point within the circle has many variations. But one of the most primitive and natural was that the sun was to be regarded as the male generative power of nature. So see, the sun represented the penis. And the circle within, uh, the dot within inside the circle represents uh, uh, the penis in the vagina. So like target, like the, the store target. That symbol that represents the target symbol. That's what that is. It says, to the ancient philosopher of origin, we're right here, and creation of life led to the contemplation of only one process and generative act, or contemplate, uh, yeah, of, uh, the generative act, or sex. And it says, the sun god was certainly the generator of life, light and heat, the male principle, and this was symbolically represented by the phallus or lingam, which was some, uh, uh here we, oh. which was some picture more or less veiled of the human male generative organ. The most frequent illustration was of a pillar set up in the center of a circle. The circle just as distinctively represented the earth or female principle. So see the vagina. The sun was the great father. In his benign influences, all nature germinated, and the earth was the universal mother, in whom ample wound all these germs grew to maturity. So this is where you get this, this woman is God shit from, man. This is all they're doing. It says, In our phallic heritage, we are told, all pillars or columns originally had a phallic significance. So see, all pillars and columns. Man, they got one of these outside Washington. The Washington Monument, man. 
big old penis. Just a big old huge rod sticking up out of the ground. Everybody just goes around over there, how all happy as hell. Taking pictures with it. I'm glad that fucker got cracked, man, when they had that earthquake a while back. I'm glad that I hope that I wish that thing would have fallen and broken in half, broken Cyrus's dick off again, man. This is nonsense. It says pan, originally the phallic significance, and were therefore considered sacred. So these things are sacred to these people. It says pan, the goat god and god of sensuality was often represented as an obelisk. So Pan was represented as an obelisk too. We saw in Codex Magica, Pan is the same thing as, as uh, the Baphomet. So it's Satan, man. It's Lucifer. It's, it's, it's Esau. It's the white man. It says, A former witch gives some interesting information about the obelisk. He writes, The obelisk is a long-pointed, four-sided shaft, the uppermost portion of which forms a pyramid. The word obelisk literally means Baal's shaft. Baalask. Uh, Baalask. Baal shaft, man. That's what obelisk means. That's what the word means. Baal shaft. Baal's penis, man. That's that's all Egypt. That's all you. That's all you, Shaka. That's all you guys. It says, or Baal's organ of reproduction. This should be especially shocking. See, this shit's shit shocking, man. When we realize that we have a gigantic obelisk in our nation's capital. Known as the Washington's Monument. Oh, see, look, this book even hit it up too. Look, Washington Monument. Of course, the Masons and the Egyptians aren't the only ones that had high regard for the obelisk. In front of the Vatican. Oh, yeah. Here we go. In front of the Vatican, the very same obelisk that once stood in Egypt. Ralph, uh, Ralph Woodrow explains. The very same obelisk that once stood in at the ancient temple, which was at the center of Egyptian paganism, now stands before the mother church of Romanism. This seems like more than a mere coincidence. So there you go. Look at that. Penis worshippers, man. Romanisms. Look at that. You guys have obelisks too. The red gigantic obelisk of Vatican. 83 feet tall. Look at that. The Pope had attached the death penalty if the obelisk was dropped and broken when it was being moved. Look at that. There's the Vatican. And there's your giant rod. Look at that. This is craziness, man. We're going to hit one last thing in this book. The all sing out. We're going to try to finish it out real quick. Let's see. Here we go. The I used in masonry is a representation of Osiris. Pike, Albert Pike, clearly reveals that the all-seeing eye is the, quote, emblem of Osiris, the creator. Okay, so Osiris is the creator according to Pike. So, what? Is it, what? You guys, you Egyptians have a million creators. So, which one is it? Is he right or is he wrong? What's up? You guys got to explain these things. So, you guys got to be talking about masonry. You guys got to talk about all this stuff because you're not bringing out anything. You're just... Freaking bringing out a bunch of crap, messing around, destroying our people. I'm goddamn tired of it. I'm sick of it. It says, he also maintains that Osiris, power and symbolized by an eye over a scepter. The sun was turned by the Greeks, the eye of Jupiter and the eye of the world. And his Osiris is the all-seeing eye in our lodges. So see, that's your all-seeing eye over the pyramid on your dollar bill in their lodges and all the all-seeing eyes Osiris, man. Your Christ. This is Masonic Arthur. Carl Claudi writes, This is the one of the oldest and most widespread symbols of denoting God. See, in God we trust. In this God, in Osiris, they trust. Not the God of the Hebrews. This is, we find it in Egypt, in India. The open eye of Egypt, of Egypt represented Osiris. In India, it was Shiva is represented by an eye. Albert Mackey, 33rd degree mason, agrees. He states, a symbol of the omniscient and watchful providence of God. It is a very ancient symbol and is supposed by some to be a relic of the primitive sun worship. Volney says in his book right there that it is most of the ancient languages of Asia, the eye and the sun are expressed by the same word. Among the Egyptians, the eye was the symbol of their supreme god Osiris or the sun. For the ancient Egyptians, the right eye symbolized the sun and the left eye the moon. So see, left eye was the moon. That's why she was all Luna. Luna means lunacy, lunatic. 
That's why she was all crazy, man. She burned down her man's bed and shit. Yeah, they take on these attributes, man. Hold on, brothers. I got. I gotta try to open up one more. Hold on.